Hi guys, welcome back. And today in this video, I'll be talking about how we can do the conversion of the Selenium test that we have already to Playwright test code with the power of artificial intelligence and with the power of chat modes, which is the GitHub chat modes. This topic came to me as a question in my conference, which happened in Auckland early this week, where one of the attorneys asked me a question that we have got the Selenium test code and we wanted to convert that to Playwright code, how can we do that? Is there a way we can actually do it? Or is there any AI agents which can do that? Well, that triggered me to create this particular video because we have an ability to do this operation without much of a sweating. And I will show you how we can actually do that. First of all, let's first understand what is exactly this particular uh, AI agent chat modes. Well, chat modes are an ability to create your own custom agents with the power of the GitHub Copilot, where these custom chat modes enable you to configure the AI to adapt different personas tailored to specific development roles and tasks. For example, in here, we are going to be converting the existing Selenium test to Playwright test. So we can create a uh, chat mode with an agent specific for this particular operation. And similarly, you can create modes for security review, planning, healing, or even test creation, stress plan designs and everything. If you have ever worked with the Playwrights agent before, you might know that the Playwright test agents are actually built using the exact same idea. It has got the planner agent, generator agent, as well as the healer agent. These are nothing but a bunch of prompts, which is written uh, using this particular chat mode uh, capabilities. And I have already talked about how this chat mode is written and how they are actually empowering the usage of uh, uh, the AI to generate the test and also do the uh, plan generations and things. That's exactly what is the idea for us today as well. We're going to do that. And if you just head over to the uh, the chat mode uh, in VS Code, if you just go and Google it, this is the page that you're going to end up. And you can see that you can create chat modes, something like this in the markdown file. That's all you have to really do. And once you do that, you are going to see everything going to come up. And because this chat mode is just like a plain English text, it's very easy to create um, based on what your requirement is all about. And I'm going to show you quickly how I have built this particular chat mode to do the conversion of the Selenium uh, code with the Playwright code. It needs few steps, as you can see over here. You are going to tell to this particular agent chat mode that you need to install the dependencies for Playwright. Right? That's the first thing which we have to do because the existing uh, Selenium test code might not have the dependencies. So it's going to go and check before there is any dependencies or not for Playwright. If it is not there, it's going to go and install that. And then it's going to also analyze the project structure of Selenium before it's going to do any of the code change. So it's going to do that as well. And then it's going to convert the existing Selenium page object model code to Playwright page object model code uh, in a separate folder for that matter. That's how I have created it. And similarly, it's going to go and convert the tests which actually uses the page object model that you are going to give it as a context while you're going to be converting that. So it's going to do that one as well as a byproduct, which is also amazing. That's something you can do. And then it's going to document the entire changes, whatever the conversion has happened, a readme file or maybe a migration.md file, something like that. So all of these are the key component of the AI agent chat modes that we are going to be building. Apart from that, you also need to tell the AI agent like how you are going to make all those changes and like a guidelines. So you're going to say that before the conversion happens, you are going to uh, see this is the method as you can see over here in the Selenium. Then in Playwright, you need to convert it like a login async because in Playwright, it, everything is asynchronous. So you're going to use the await keyword and async task. And similarly, you're going to create an element interaction mapping where you're going to say that this is how the element interaction needs to happen. And these are the one that you need to use for Selenium. And that's exactly what is applicable for Playwright. So you're going to do the mapping for the element interaction. Like click for Selenium is going to be await locator.click async. Similarly, send keys of text is going to be fill async text. Similarly, clear is going to be fill async. Uh, similarly, text is going to be the text content async or inner text async, something like that. So you're going to do all the mappings. So this is the very, very super high level mapping that I have done. But you can keep on adding this particular uh, agent in such a way that you can increase all all the coverage as much as you want. For this demonstration, I have made it as simple as possible, but you can keep on increasing that particular uh, complexity of the particular agent mode to have all of them covered, which is amazing. And similarly, iWebDriver in Selenium is now moved to iPage because that's how you're going to pass it to the constructor because that's what you really need uh, while working with the page object model code. 
And of course, how you're gonna write the test as well is being defined here. So once you define all of these, then you are pretty good to go to start building your own custom agent for the conversion of the Selenium test to Playwright code. And I'm gonna show you how everything is going to work in this particular video. And again, if you are already familiar with this particular code, it's very, very straightforward. All this particular code is gonna do it is it's gonna start installing uh, some of the bunch of files in there. I will quickly show you how we can actually do that as well. So the first thing which I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna to go to this particular repository over here, the Selenium CI CD demo. I think I've worked on this particular repository like long time before and a year before. So I'm gonna go and start using it and I will see uh, how we can actually uh, use that um, so let's go and go to a folder something like this uh, and I'm gonna do a git clone and I'm gonna clone this particular repository which is the Selenium CI CD demo you can also go and search in the user automation github repository you can find the exact similar project so it's not a problem at all and once I clone it, it is going to be there for you. And then I'm going to go to the Selenium uh, CI CD demo and I'm going to open Visual Studio code over here. That's going to open the Visual Studio code for me. And you can see that this is a very, very super simple Selenium code which has got the tests written either in NUnit, also with Selenium grid, also with the data-driven testing you know, over here. And also it has got the normal test that have you write it uh, using uh, the uh, X unit and things. And also you can see that we have got some models here, like how it has been used. And also there are some page object model codes for the login page, as you can see over here. I know it's not that of a page, like it's very super simple but while it go very complex you can see how it's been achieved it's also something that you can easily achieve and also you can see that currently we're using this the c sharp dot net uh, tool version of the uh, the primary constructor operations and things so these things will be automatically converted for you as well from this particular chat prompt all right so now you can see that we already have got a dot github slash workflow for the ci cd pipeline execution to happen and guess what? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to open the Windows terminal over here. Just hold on that particular path that you're seeing here, like the GitHub folder there. The reason why I wanted to insist is because I'm going to go to the uh, the Playwright thingy over here, and I'm just going to install this particular uh, particular agent over here with a loop as VS Code. I know that I'm not going to use this particular agent mode at all in this particular demonstration, but the reason why I wanted to show you is this is how you can create the chat mode really. So the moment I hit enter over here, you see that the GitHub over here has got a new folder called as the chat modes. And within this chat mode, you have got all these agents. See, that's exactly what we need to create as well, guys. This is not a big deal to be honest. You can create your own chat mode as well. And if you just go to the chat mode, you will see that they have got a description. They have got the tools which is being utilized by this particular uh, chat mode or the agent. Uh, and then what is the details over here? So you got all the detail like a prompt which is being written. It's very, very super simple prompt to be honest. But the moment we are going to start writing it, it's going to be very, very complex because I want to keep things as explanatory and as much as covered as possible. So we're going to convert the entire Selenium test to Playwright test. So we need to have many things over there, right? Like it's not very as simple as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the unnecessary chat modes, which I don't even need. Uh, even I'm going to remove this guy as well. I don't even need that guy. See, in order for you to create a chat mode, you just have to create a file like this. Uh, and let's say selenium to playwright uh, dot chat mode dot md, something like that, right? That's all you have to do. The moment you do it, now this file is going to be available for you in this particular um, in this particular GitHub Copilot's agent over here. See that? Selenium to Playwright. See, I just added that particular file. The moment I add this, you are going to see this one over here. That's it. And now once we have this guy, I am going to create the chat mode that I was just describing, which is this one. I know it's number of lines is like 598 over here. It's a lot, uh, but it does a lot of different operation. I'm also going to give uh, probably uh, the uh, the icon that what the, the Playwright team has added, something like this. See, this is the icon that they are using. So I can also have that particular thing added over here. So now my agent will have Selenium to Playwright agent. Amazing. So I can go and choose that and I'm going to start working with it. But before I start doing that, let me show you the prompt that I have written over here to make this entire operation of conversions. So I'm going to say here that 
use this agent to convert selenium page object model code to playwright page object model code in c sharp.net so i'm very much restricting this particular code just for c sharp.net not for java or javascript because the more and more you make this particular chat mode complex it will start making more uh, hallucination to your uh, large language model so have it probably in a different uh, files like for c sharp for java for javascript typescript something like that so that you don't really end up with having uh, multiple different combinations of things in one single file and it's also very much easy to maintain you know or the modularity and maintainability things that you can do it as well and over here i'm saying that the agent maintains structure functionalities and test logic while modernizing the playwright's async pattern and built-in waiting mechanism and this is the tool which i don't need to use and these tools are sitting within my uh, within my tooling systems over here see that the moment i'm going to define the tools over here only these tools are going to be chosen um, as you can see over here see these are the only tools just being chosen not every single tools are going to be chosen because the moment you're going to choose the agent for that matter um maybe i'm just going to choose the agent uh, over here you see that number of tools which has been chosen um which is this one is going to be 260 tools we don't read all of these tools we need to limit the number of tools usage and that's why i'm going to just use only these tools no more tools i'm not even using the playwright tool as you can see over here I'm also saying that you are a C-sharp.net test converter, an expert in migrating the Selenium-based page of the model code to Playwright, and your specialty is transforming the legacy Selenium test code into modern, robust Playwright implementation while preserving business logic and improving readability through Playwright's built-in features. And here is the conversion. See, as I told you, check and install the Playwright dependencies uh, and organize the project structure like how you wanted to and analyze the Selenium code structures, convert the pages to their uh, test, respective test, convert the test class and inherit the page test in unit or equivalent for that. And similarly, generate the complete uh, converted code uh, and document the key changes. And this is the NuGet package that you need to install. You can go and change the version here. What is the latest version? You need to probably use that one as well. And then detect the existing uh, test frameworks. Post installation, you need to do all of these. See, change that particular driver thingy from the page other model code. And also how you're going to convert the locators uh, and how you are going to work out all of these. And this is the coding structure, like how you're going to do with the Selenium. And once you do the conversion uh, with Playwright, this is how the code should be. So I'm going to write all the code over here. So this is the test code for Selenium. So I'm going to convert the page model code. And this is the uh, test code over here. I'm also defining the project structure. So I'm expecting the, the agent to go and create me a, a Playwright pages as well as uh, the tests for me uh, over there, not within the existing pages. I'm not going to disturb the Selenium test. I'm going to have a separate folder called as Playwrights pages so that it will have only those pages and the existing login page will still remain there. It's not going to be disturbed for that matter. That's how I have written it over here. And this is the output format that you need to create. Uh, and also the final structure should look something like this, see? It's like converted and the test is going to be the updated and converted for you over here. Pretty cool. I know it's a lot of things over here to digest, but this is going to make your conversion of your Selenium test to Playwright test with just a matter of second. And I'll show you how it's going to look like. So I'm going to go and choose this particular agent from here. And now I'm going to uh, choose a page which I wanted to convert. And the good thing is I only have one page. So I'm going to choose that particular page over here. And I want to do the full conversion. So I'm going to say convert uh, convert the page to uh, playwright, uh, playwright. That's it. This is the only thing which I have to give because the agent knows what to do with that particular page object model code uh, as well as the test and everything. See, now I'm going to uh, hit that enter over there. And the moment I give, give this, because already the chat mode has got all the instruction to work out with that particular page the test extension methods or whatever it knows everything like how to work out with so it you see that now it is using the reference of the tool.instruction.md file uh, and then it is going to modify the test project structure that is the first thing that which i had to do uh, and then it is going to modify everything over here i have unfortunately chosen the model as auto but if i'm going to choose the cloud 4.5 it's always going to be better uh, but i i just forgot to do that but we'll see because based on the load the um, the visual studio code is going to redact the uh, model to be chosen but let's just wait for that to happen you look at that it's doing a lot of thinking here uh, and it is doing the conversions 
Uh, let's just wait for the conversion to happen. So it's preparing for the patch changes and everything. So it's reading all the uh, test code before it start working on it. Uh, and then it is going to start converting it. So I'm just going to wait for this conversion to happen. And let's see what's really going to happen at the end. All right, looks like it has fully completed the migration in just a matter of second. And if I'm gonna to go to the login page over here, you can see that it is using the login page uh, with an I page over here. And also you can see that it is passing the I page something like this. And this is the constructor which is, which is used to pass the I page for you uh, over here. And look at that, how the conversion has happened. For the employee details, it is actually using the ARIA locator with the link and the name uh, is employee details. The link is manage user, the link is log off, which is, which is perfect. To be honest, that is how I would have written the code if I'm writing it. And look at that, these methods are all of now in the uh, async method, which is quite amazing. Uh, and you can also see how it is writing all the code by using the task everywhere, which is fabulous to be honest. And then the test code, you can see that it has modified the test code as well as asynchronous over here. And it's just calling with the asynchronous operation. And now everything is written, written over here. Look at the category, it's just putting the player ID DT, which is amazing. And yeah, look at that. Everything is converted, guys. Then we have things ready over here. Now I want to explore this by running this particular code and see if this code is really going to work or not. So let me just open this particular project in the... Uh, in the writer IDE or whatever, so that I can execute this particular code. So I'm just going to reveal this in the finder, which is this one. Uh, and I'm going to go to the .NET Selenium, which is this one. And let me open this particular project uh, over here, it's just loading up. And yeah, that's all good for us over here. I'm going to build this particular project to see if this, whatever code is being generated, is actually going to work for us or not. Look at that, the build is succeeded, guys. It's, it's, it's working fine. And we have got the Playwright pages as well, which is all amazing. And you see how amazingly it's been written. And let's go to the test and see if this code is gonna work. And again, as I told you, like the moment I start doing this one, everybody start saying that maybe you need to go and check the logic, whether it's working or not, because this is test, right? You can run this test and see and prove that your test is going to work or not in first place. So the, the, the best way is to go and choose these tests and run all the unit tests just like that. And you will immediately get the feedback to say that whether these tests are actually working fine or not. So you can see that it is currently running the test for me over here and they are passing there. It's not that I'm going to lie to see you saying that this code is not going to work. It is working and it is passing for us over here. And look at that, everything is working. And there are some failing tests. I think they're all expected to fail because that's how the Selenium test is going to fail for us over here, for there as well. But you can see that already the test is all passing over here look at that it's all just amazingly working which is amazing and all the tests are passing for me over here except few which are expected to fail because that's how i have written in the selenium test as well but they are passing for me over here we can probably ask in the prompt to say like add more verbose information while you actually convert these uh, tests for me we can do all of these but it doesn't matter you can keep on uh, improving your uh, chat modes like how you wanted to. But hey, guess what? This every single code that we have got is converted. And we have got the conversion of the Selenium test with Playwright with just a matter of second. And this code, the, this prompt that you're seeing over here, I'm gonna put it in my GitHub repository so that you can use it directly within your organization and see how it works. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts on what do you think about these kind of chat modes and how the conversions can really help you to do better work in your organization. But once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Catch you in the next one.